Hey guys and welcome back. In today's video I'm going to be talking you through some of the ways that you can use the slinger bag if you are an intermediate tennis player. Now I've also made the equivalent videos for beginners and advanced so feel free to check those out too. I'm pretty sure at any level all of the videos will be useful to you but today we're going to be looking at intermediates. Let's check it out. Welcome back. If you've not been here before, my name is Ashley Neves and I run the Tennis Mentor YouTube and Instagram accounts, giving tips for tennis players, tennis coaches and tennis parents. Now this video in particular, we're going to be looking at practicing with purpose. Now the great thing about the slinger bag is you don't need to arrange with anybody else, you can just rock up to a tennis court with your slinger bag and have a really good training session. In the beginners video, we were looking at the basics in just getting to grips with hitting the ball over and in, but for intermediate players, we want a bit more than that. Now when I talk about practicing with purpose, we're going to start looking at having targets and goals which will help us to track our progress. So first of all I've got the slinger set up just inside the service boxes at the other end. You'll notice that that's further away than in the video that we had for beginners so it's going to be more challenging in itself. The ball will come in slightly faster and it will come in with slightly more top spin so you're going to have to really focus on that extra early preparation. The settings that I've got currently for this drill is the trajectory on 15, the speed on one third and the feed on a half. I've got targets on the juice side and the ad side which I'm going to be aiming towards. So I've got two orange goal posts and two red goal posts on the other side. I'm going to be looking at hitting four hands and I'm going to count how many goals I can score into the orange cones to start off with. So let's see how I get on. I'm going to be hitting four hands cross court to the orange so that's one out of one that was just long one out of two two out of three three out of four four out of five five out of six six out of seven seven out of eight Eight out of nine. Nine out of 10. So there you go, I got nine out of 10 on that round. That probably says to me that the goalposts were a little bit wide, so maybe next time I'd make them more narrow. But try to have consistency when you're doing this. And really, the first time you do the drill, you want to be scoring something like four or five out of 10. That way, you've got room for improvement and you've set the challenge right. Next time, set the cones up in the same position and see if you can beat that score. If you can record your scores each time you play, it will give you something to aim for and something to improve. You can obviously play around with the settings. They were the settings that I used. If you wanted it more challenging, you could increase the speed or the interval settings. But I would probably suggest doing four or five rounds of 10 on the forehand, repeat four or five rounds on the backhand side and track all of your scores. So with the same settings, I'm going to do exactly the same exercise, but this time I'm going to hit my forehand down the line between the red goal posts. Let's see if I do better or worse than on the cross court drill. Oh, I hit the cone, does that count? You decide. I'm gonna call it one out of one, two out of two. Mm, not quite, two out of three. Three out of four. No, three out of five. Mm, just on the line, four out of six. That was long, four from seven. Five from eight. Six from nine. Seven out of 10. So straight away there, you can see that my accuracy wasn't quite as good on my down the line forehands. So that could be an area that I can work on. By having physical scores and tangible evidence, it will help you to progress areas in your game that you're weaker at. Right, let's take a look at my backhand side. All I've done is I've just slightly turned the slinger to face my backhand side, and I'm gonna do the same drill. We're gonna start off with cross court backhand to see how many I get out of 10. My instincts tell me that my backhand is going to be weaker than my forehand, so let's see how close to nine out of 10 I can score. Here we go. Oh, it's a bit windy now, one out of one. Two out of two. Three out of three. Four from four. Not quite, four from five. 
five from six, six from seven, seven from eight, not quite, eight from nine, eight from ten. Cool. I was pleasantly surprised by my backhand, but eight out of 10. So next time I'm gonna see if I can beat it. As you can probably hear, I'm a bit worn out. It's a good workout. Let's try backhands down the line. On my forehand side, my down the line was a little bit weaker than my cross court. Let's see how I get on on the backhand side. Here we go. One out of one. Nope, one out of two. Two out of three. Three out of four. Four out of five. Long, four out of six. Got it, five out of seven. Long, five out of eight. Six out of nine. Seven out of 10. You probably can tell, or you probably can hear it actually, pretty windy on that round so I'm not using that as an excuse but I definitely found it tougher so that same exercise can be done on any shot of your choice and with any target zone of your choice so for example you could hit volleys to slightly wider targets you could be hitting serves using ball boy mode just with the slinger set up throwing you the ball and aiming your serve to the targets but as soon as you introduce targets to your practice session, but more than that, as soon as you introduce a scoring system, it's going to make you more accountable for where your shots are landing. You may have been hoping when clicking on this video that you would see some really complex drills. If you're looking for more complicated drills, check out the advanced video. But I believe that you're gonna get even more value from this video if you take on the information about tracking your scores. My biggest piece of advice for you when setting up targets like this and setting up scoring systems is to be consistent. So I would definitely jot down where you've put the cones on the court. You can copy my positions here. They're a good place to start. I would jot down the settings that you're using. Again, you can copy these settings as a starting point. Obviously, if you want to make it more challenging, increase the speed. If you want to make it easier, you can maybe put the ball machine on the same side of the court as you, a bit like in the beginner's video. But by jotting everything down, it's gonna allow you to pick things up in your next session really, really quickly. Quite often we can be faffing around with playing with the machine and the different settings to try to get it right. But if we get it right once and we jot it down, it's gonna be far more efficient for our next time on court. And it's gonna allow you to track your progress realistically. At the end of the day, tennis is all about putting the ball where you want it to go. And if we practice with purpose, we're gonna get a lot more bang for our buck during our sessions. If you found it easy, make the targets smaller. If you found it too difficult, increase the size of the targets. I didn't get 10 out of 10 and the targets were pretty big, so I've still got room for improvement at that size before I choose to go a little bit smaller. Anyway, give those exercises a go, progress them how you see fit and tailor them to your needs. Work on the shots that you want to work on and put the targets where you want to be hitting your shots. Good luck with your tennis. Enjoy your sessions with the Slinger Bag. And if you got anything from this video, let me know in the comments below and consider subscribing to the Tennis Mentor YouTube channel to see more videos like this. Good luck, take care.